My dog will chase anybody on a bicycle. In fact, I'm starting to regret buying one for him. If you can look back on a life where there's been a lot of laughter, or it feels like there was a lot of laughter, that's actually the really important stuff that's happening right there. You're remembering the people and the places and the situations in which laughter happened. There are thousands of papers on fear in neuroscience and psychology. What is it? There are less than 200 on laughter. It's extraordinary. We think it's about comedy and humour, but actually it's an incredibly nuanced and complex social, emotional tool. It's universally recognised. It's one of the more important emotions that we use in social interactions to actually manage the emotional tone of an interaction with somebody. I'm the director at the Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience at University College London. One of the reasons no one was ever studying laughter is it sounds like a stupid thing to study. And I have kind of run into that. You do meet people thinking, well, clearly this is a manifestly idiotic thing for scientists to do. I never set out to be a scientist who studied human behavior and human brains. The whole neurobiology of why we sound the way we do and how we get information out of voices, the more you study them, it's like a hall of mirrors of complexity. This kind of nuance starts to just develop in all directions. There's always an emotional meaning to that. There's always a social meaning to our voice. Sound is the thing that connects us with the world. I grew up in Blackburn in Lancashire. My mum was a teacher and my dad sold carpets. My father was very good at setting up immediate relationships with people and sort of getting the old chat going. He was funny and he could make them laugh. There's a sort of beauty and a power to it. I've learned a huge amount about the human voice and how we can use it by looking at people who've got different perspectives on their voice. I work with people who've had strokes, people who stammer. I work with people who are beatboxers and vocal impressionists and actors. You learn something new about the thing you thought you already understood. It makes the whole scientific research more meaningful. The voice is also a source of tremendous anxiety for many people. One of the things that I am very, very interested in is finding ways, not of curing voices, but curing people of the anxiety. What I would really like would be for my research to contribute to a view that when humans talk to each other, the words they say matter. Let people own their voices, let people have their own voice and let them speak.